I want to talk a bit about uh, uh, the uh, conservatives and their uh, get tough on crime uh, thing. Of course, they're not here to, to, to discuss that tonight, but uh, I got to tell you what, uh, I'm an ex-convict, and, and most people that read my book and know my life story know that I spent seven years in jail. Uh, I'm an ex-con. It's very difficult for ex-cons when you when you get uh, out of jail to to find a decent job. Most people won't hire you. Uh, but the thing is, the Department of Correctional Services uh, of Ontario, of course, that's the Liberals, have uh, employed my services over the past uh, uh, six, seven years, and I've traveled across uh, our province and some uh, Millhaven. Joyceville, Collins Bay, Kingston before it was closed down, and uh, the list goes on because I've, I've covered, I've been in prisons all over North America speaking with young people that really want to be rehabilitated, and when they come out of prison, they want to be able to, to assimilate back into the system. The problem is, when they're spending this time in prison, they're not being rehabilitated. There's no emphasis on skilled trades or whatever whatever it takes so that when, he, when, he, when, when I got out of prison, the reason I didn't go back was because I had, I had someone in my corner. That's a different, that's a romance story, and my beautiful wife. But we need to look in that direction too because ex-convicts are people too. And they come out and we want to, to, to help them so they won't go back into the criminal element. We must begin in prison. And I want to go to the Green Party to start to start with this. Your thoughts on that, and perhaps which you would which you would present in that area. Carl Lacroix from the Green. So when it comes to uh, handling crime, um, a lot of a lot of crime comes from poverty. Uh, crimes of poverty is a, is a big source of uh, a lot of the reason why we have people going to jail in the first place. Um, so. In terms of rehabilitation, we are definitely for rehabilitation rather than punishment, as we've seen from our current government. Um, we want to see, while they're spending their time uh, in incarceration, that there is uh, a productive element there so that then when they do eventually will come out of prison, that they can come to a society that can accept them, um, so that they're prepared to handle and deal with the ongoing issues as a citizen and not as a second class ex-convict, because that's totally not fair to people who, who've just come out. I've got family who've, who've gone through this element, and it not only is it already hard on the, on the family level when you're trying to make connections in old, with old friends, um, that's already tough. When you have to go to a job force and you've got that on your paper, it's just, it's just absolutely depressing. Um, now, I think there's a, the root of the problem really goes to getting people to not go to prison. That's really a big thing there. And as I mentioned with crimes of poverty, we need to start looking at uh, why are some of these people going away? And a lot of the times, it's as I've said, there's, there's instances where people are stealing, and the stealing is because they can't afford to get by anymore. They can't afford in this economy. Our rate of inflation, the cost of living is becoming too high for, our, uh, for, for anybody to really afford, especially youth who are, um, you know, it, like that's the, a, a terrible thing to see youth go into to the, uh, the, through the criminal justice system. We need to try to make efforts to avoid that. Um, as Pauline had mentioned earlier, the, the guaranteed livable income is one way to do this, to help them stay out. We also have um, a National Youth Work Corps that will get people, or get youth especially, engaged in the workforce so that they can start employ being employed. It keeps them off the street, keeps them away from dangerous elements uh, that lurk out there on the streets. Uh, it gets them more engaged and towards a more positive future. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll go to the uh, NDP. Rosemary Keenan, please. So just to expand on that, we know for a fact that the majority of young people in prisons are disadvantaged youth. They are uh, First Nations youth and uh, disproportionately First Nations and disproportionately um, kids of color. Um, so the issue is not to put them in jail. The issue is we need to address those community services that are required. And in fact, both conservative and liberal governments have been cutting community services uh, for over 20 years, cutting educational services, cutting health services, which includes mental health. And we need to re-establish those kinds of services and have a national strategy to make sure we support youth, we support mental health uh, issues, and we support faith groups and other community groups dealing with those. 
And final rebuttal on this, uh, Ruby Sato from the Liberals. I, I absolutely agree that the root of the problem is um, you know, people resort to certain means because of their background or the means that they have at the time. So we have to solve this through infrastructure, through economic growth, through the opportunity for jobs, apprenticeships, what we were talking about before, uh, trade jobs. Uh, the Liberal Party will be investing $10 million a year to help Canadian youths in high trade uh, to train them for trade jobs. So that's one way we can get these kids to, you know, become an active part of our communities. Another way is through the funding for social services that will be a part of our infrastructure funding. So I believe this plan that we have for infrastructure will help solve a lot or alleviate a lot of these problems, whether it be The one thing I'm not hearing here, though, is I agree. It, it, it begins in the, the environment we're in, the environments they live in. A lot of that comes in there. But there are thousands upon thousands of young people in prison now. I'm talking about them. Uh, we're working on the ones that are going there uh, through, through and, and of course we need more youth initiatives. We need to empower them. We, we need to we do, do, be devoted to that. And, and cutting programs doesn't help. But what I'm suggesting is, what about the ones that are already in prison? There's not very much going on in the area. That's what I want to hear. Because if they don't, they're going to come out and go right back into the same vicious circle. Go ahead. Back to the NDP. Adoma. Um, so the challenge is that under the current government, of course, there is this focus on putting people away um, and this tough on crime approach. Even although violent crime has been decreasing, the amount of investment and money we have been putting into prisons and things like mandatory minimums uh, is having that impact of having young people and others sit in jail for long periods of time without rehabilitation. Uh, and so the NDP absolutely believes in putting the focus on prevention and rehabilitation. So until you change, until you change the government and the approach and the philosophy, this will continue to happen. So a final point on this, I'm going to give this to Raj Grewal and the Liberals. Over the past 10 years, we have a government that is putting money into building mega prisons when we have a declining crime rate. So the Liberal Party of Canada under Justin Trudeau is going to reverse that money into rehabilitation within the current system. So our current youth, people that are behind bars, have an opportunity to put put their lives back on the right track. Uh, the, the Conservative government in the past 10 years has done nothing but put the fear in Canadians, whether it's mandatory minimums, when there are these huge omnibus bills. We need a culture change in government at the federal level to address problems like this, Spider. And the Liberal Party and Justin Trudeau are the only party with a real plan to ensure it gets done. Thank you, Raj. 